Oh, Hot 97 being Hot 97. This is an interesting article just because it's Hot 97 doing what they do best. I mentioned previously about the whole Takashi 6 9 is- issue, right? Um, the whole idea behind it is going to be a paradigm shifting thing. It's going to really shake up the industry and shake up the, you know, how people view hip hop, especially the people that came from the, the streets with hip hop or came from, you know, really the, the origins of hip hop, right? The idea behind breakdancing, DJs, um, the idea behind it being kind of closely affiliated with gang culture in some regard, right? Those, it's going to really question all those things that we know, all our preconceived, all our pre-assumptions, because you know, effectively, from what we know, Takashi Six Nine is cooperating with the with the feds, and he's kind of you know basically snitching on his fellow co-defendants in terms of so he can get a lighter sentence. He's rejected um, um, uh, witness protection, and he he intends to come out of prison and res- resume his musical career, right? Because he has to. What else can he do? Right? He doesn't have any other job or life skills for the most part. He's got his face completely covered in tattoos, so it makes complete sense. Um, but then news uh, news kind of came out recently that he also signed a $10 million deal. And I think part of the reason why I was talking about it the other day was that it's going to be interesting because so far we haven't seen any backlash from radio stations, from record labels, from concert promoters, from arenas, from venues saying we're never going to have this guy play again. I think the only people that have banned him so far is a Barclays, right? Where he where this, allegedly they were shooting up the, the place, um, you know, trying to intimidate Casanova or something during that court case start saying they're talking about right so that's a new place i think so far he's been banned categorically but for the most part he's gonna find it pretty easy to probably travel i think for the most part he's gonna have he's gonna have an audience in europe he did that european tour that was really successful um where he met West, westwood was touring around with him and that went really well so we haven't seen the industry react so far to what's happening right all we've kind of seen is just artists kind of you know that hip-hop artists older statements older statesmen like you know meek mill said something about him two chase something about him ti something about him like everyone's G Herbert or something. People are coming out and saying things like calling him a rat, whatever. But for the most part, the consumers and the people at large who are going to cut him the check have kind of kept quiet, right? The consumers who are going to provide him with the people and ensure he pockets aligned, and the uh, labels who might front the cash in order to make sure that he goes on tour have kept quiet. But so far, the one person to break their silence has been Hot 97, of course, right? Hot 97 maybe makes sense because, you know, they are New York's most well known radio station, maybe not the biggest breakfast club. Power 105 and Breakfast Club probably taken over from them, but in terms of just that, you know, um, legacy name, Hot 97 is very closely close associated or, you know, married or, you know, joined to the hip hand in hand with hip hop in the New York scene, general by and large. So it makes it's probably of it makes it's probably um, makes sense that they come out and say something, but it's just like Hot 97 to um, adopt this really weird moral stance in a situation that has nothing to do with them, right? So TMZ are reporting that Hot 97. Um, aim to not play his music, right? Unless, right? This is a weird, weird kind of like fucking um, disclaimer at the end of it. But it's an article from TMZ. It says the following New York um, City's biggest hip hop radio station, to catch his, um, says the Catch 6 9 will not get no spins once he releases for music unless the snitching rapper's music forces their hand, right? Which is d- insane. If you're going to have a moral stance behind what 6 9 did, which you probably shouldn't again because it doesn't involve them, they're not in the streets, they're not of the streets. There's nothing about Hot 87 that is about street culture, right? The amount of time they banned 50 Cent, for instance, and people of those kind of ilk for being quote unquote related to the streets, having so, some sort of problems at a radio station is insane. So for them to suddenly have this stance doesn't make any sort of sense. But if you're going to do it, go the whole way. Don't say unless the public forces their hand. It makes no sense, right? And it also continues. An executive from Hot 87, probably Ebro, um, tells, Hot 87 tells, tells um, TMZ when Takashi is released from prison and drops new music, the radio station will not jump on to debut any of his records they don't anticipate playing any of his music at all which is really re- moronic because we sh- we're, we're, i'm pretty sure i think takashi was trolling ibra for a minute right um was trolling him to get an interview and they never got an interview at the end of it uh, most of it had to do maybe because he had some inside info about what was going on about the case maybe they were just a bit shy maybe they were just shy about asking after he went on breakfast club and completely smashed their viewing records i don't know but it seemed an, it seemed like an easy layup for them right they love to con- call controversy they want to be part of the conversation because you know they're effectively been left in the dust with the breakfast club so they're always trying to insert themselves in there whether it's rosenberg taking some corny backpacker hip-hop ideal um, point of view behind some issue whether it's ebro saying something inane or trying to be a troll which is not really a troll he's just a, a an old dude that's chat shit um you know there, there's always an issue they have a the sound guy had an issue with joe but there's always something they're trying to get themselves involved in or inserted in so they can kind of be part of the conversation and effectively not that which is you know again admirable because nowadays with um with the how quickly media is changing and how quickly these meme pages and these kind of um, hip hop news page meme hip hop Instagram pages are popping up all the time. They had to do something in order to not to get left behind. No way, no um, no qualms about it. But don't pretend like 
you didn't want that interview. Don't pretend like you didn't want those have a million views his Breakfast Club interview got, right? Both of those interviews. The one where he went on all cocky and the one where he came back a bit with his, with his tail between his legs when he kind of felt the pressure for the feds. They want those hits. It makes no sense. And it, uh, this article it makes no sense even because they're stipulated at the end of it. They're only going to play his music when, if the public forces them to like, if the public demands. And if you know anything about Takeshi 6 ix audience or consumers or fans or even his approach, the first thing he's gonna do when he comes out is troll hot in his hot ninety seven and get them to and get them to kind of fucking bombard Ebro Rosenberg and everyone else and Laura Styles Instagram page with comments about play to catch six nine right they're gonna be bombarding his page with all that so it doesn't make any sense why they're doing this anyway um it continues the fact is exec tells hot 97 tells us hot 97 has never been a huge takashi 69 supporter and him writing on his former gang members is digging an even bigger hole for himself like what do they so what like, what does that have to do with them? Why do they care about him writing? It makes no sense, right? Um, we wrote the story. One record label making a multi-million dollar investment into Catch 6 9 banking on him to get out of prison sooner rather than later, which is which is a great, shrewd investment. That's where you know you have your mind screwed on as an investor or as somebody that knows about money, right? To get take all the emotion out of it, take all the scenario out of it, take away his who he is, the rainbow head, the tattoos, all the all, everything, all the beefs, and look at it just as a pure commodity. This guy who was the hottest rapper in the world for a year, as Kaskar never said, right? He's going to come out of prison, right? After a very protracted case, right? And this is, you have to also remember, there was a there was a time and place where people were thinking that he was pretending that he was from the streets and he had gang affiliations. They didn't think it was real. Then it transpires that it actually was real. He partook in some of the crimes, allegedly through the court case documents and testimony. And now he's on trial for it. And he had to snitch his friends to get out of a fucking 49-year sentence that would have made him come out when he was 40, 69, right? That big meme that was going around. So this was a big deal. He went through a lot of the stuff in in a year. So if you're an investment banker, if you're someone with with your head screwed on, the first thing you're going to do when he gets out is put some money in his pocket, get him out there and, and perform, and then see that money triple and come back at you. Because if, he, if he's able to have a year that he did last year, just even a half a year this year with all the attention he's got on him, you're going to make your investment back in, in six months easy. So it makes some... It's, that's... that's that's why you have to kind of view it in the long term. And again, if you hold on seven, why to take a moral stance with it? Why couldn't they get him on? Maybe educate the audience about what they see is not right and what he did. And maybe have a good conversation, maybe an argument, whatever it may be. That would effectively then help the station anyway in terms of views and subscriptions. So it makes, it, it serves them no, it, it serves, it's probably, you, they're leaving money on the table. They're effectively ruining their own quote unquote brand and their image amongst millennials and kids because they'll just see them as the old fuddy dads that can't embrace the youth. It makes no sense, and he just goes. He goes and takes all his views and his attention somewhere else. But anyway, what do I know? Um, well, Hot 97 is firmly against giving 6ix9ine any radio play in the future. It says here there is one scenario where the new uh, tunes could flood their <laughs> their airways. The exec tells us Takeshi 6ix9ine will get spins only if there is a massive outcry from the masses over a huge successful song. Because in the end, capitalism thumps, trumps. Oh, it makes no sense. Takeshi 6ix9ine's prospects of performing Hot 97 wildly popular summer jam are also slim as none. The exec tells us that Takeshi 6ix9ine is totally liability and will not be allowed to take the stage at any future concert. But who cares? Summer jam has not been relevant for years. Even New York based artists or hip hop artists don't really care that much about it, right? They have a hard time booking some of the big people because there's, with the Rolling Loud smashing it recently, I think in New York recently now, and all these other festivals that are popping up, people going to Coachella. Why would you care about going to Rolling? Why would you care about going to Hot and Top, Hot and Seven Summer Jam? Makes no sense. Like, if anything, Takeshi Stein is probably doing them a favor more so than they're doing him a favor, aren't they? It's just there's a it's a bizarre state of affairs. I really don't understand their kind of this moral point of view or stance. And then at the end of it, you're putting this game. Oh, we're only going to play if the public demands we play it. It's like what? And again, like I said, he's going to be successful without them anyway, regardless. If he's able to keep his nose clean come out have a good documentary that kind of details his whole experience have a really good sit down interview with charlemagne or somebody else i don't know who's going to have it with or even the breakfast club and really get to the core of what happened and talk about it openly make a joke of himself turn himself into a meme maybe start putting a rat emoji or whatever and things next to his name right maybe start selling rat merch and stuff like really crazy funny like stuff that would make your average backpack rapper or or rap fan of hip-hop from the streets their blood boil if they were able to do that and really kind of kind of lean into the meme which he's kind of done in the past before right um you know with him swimming in his boxes running around running around with his top off um swimming in a swimming pool with dj academics if he's able to lean into the meme he'll be fine and then all this stuff that all this posturing from all these radio stations this sort of kind of um hip-hop virtue signaling will look fucking ridiculous as it already does anyway by the most part but yeah just an incredible state of affairs from Martin seven you could have you could have anticipated them for imagine right breakfast club are the one that had gave him you know amazing platform and allowed him to get off some of the best 
you know, content that he would imaginable and maybe get people to understand him a bit more. He was, you know, the meme came out that he kind of scored Charlemagne and trolled him were better than he would be able to troll, you know, him back. They were the ones that were quite front and center of this whole thing, right? A lot of the kind of, you know, rumors that came out were post his second interview when he was kind of starting to crumble were from the Breakfast Club. And they haven't inserted themselves into the conversation. They've not even said anything that I don't think publicly that much. Maybe Charlemagne says stuff in, on these podcasts with, with uh, Andrew Schultz, the brilliant idiots. But for the most part, they've kept, them, they've kept their counsel. And ho- imagine, Hot 97, who has nothing to do with the show, apart from Ibra having beef with him online, are the ones now kind of like poking their head and like, hey guys, what's going on here? It's like, come on, man, have some dignity, man. It's so disgusting. Shambolic, really, isn't it? Like, ugh. But what can you do, man? Old fogies trying to keep, their, keep the lights on in their house. You can't blame them in some respect. But yeah, not for me. Not for me.